right, now we're going to find the equation of the inverse of y equals f of x. So in this case, they're going to give us f of x, and they want us to find the equation that will undo it. So they want us to find the inverse. So first thing you're going to do, I'll write out the steps. Step one, interchange x and y. Literally just the letters themselves, wherever they are in the problem, are going to swap places. I will show you in just a second. We're going to solve for the new y. And then, if it is a one-to-one -one function, replace with f to the negative 1 of x. Now listen, and this will let me know if you're really listening and paying attention. This notation is not mathematical at all. There is no, you're not doing anything. It is only to notify you that this is the inverse. So the first person who asks me, what does this, t what do I do with this? I know you didn't watch the videos and you didn't listen because that f to the negative 1 is not mathematical. It is only a label, that is all. When you see that notation, something to the negative one power like that, it means the inverse. All right, so we're gonna do three examples. So let me write them out real quick. F of, F, F of x equals two x plus five. Y equals x squared plus two. And F of x, equals x minus 2 cubed. Now, I always ask myself when I first look at a problem, what operations do I see in that problem? So that I know when I do the inverse, I better see the opposite of those. So in my first one in A, I see multiplication, 2 times x, 2x, that's multiply. And I see plus 5, which means I'm going to have to have division and subtraction or this won't be an inverse. All right, so we're gonna follow our steps. Step one says interchange x and y. So this one actually doesn't even have a y in it, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna rewrite this as y equals 2x plus five. So now that I have y equals 2x plus five, now I can interchange x and y. So I'm literally taking x and y and swapping their places. So it's going to be x equals, nothing else in the problem moves. So 2y plus 5. The next step is to solve for the new y, which means I am getting this y by itself. So I need to get rid of everything that's with it. So I need to get rid of plus 5. In order to get rid of plus 5, I subtract 5 from both sides. On the right-hand side, it does exactly what I need to happen. Plus 5 minus 5 cancels out. On the left-hand side, I can't do anything but just write that down as x minus 5 equals 2y. Now I need to get that y by itself. So I need to get rid, this needs to be alone. So I need to get rid of that 2. I'm going to do that by division, so there by multiplication. So I'm going to get rid of it by dividing. Now, I'm going to show you this two different ways. If I divide the right side, I have to divide the left side. And so I end up with x minus 5 divided by 2 equals y. Now, there's nothing wrong with this as an as algebra equation. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But I think in my Lives Plus, they want you to split it up. So if you think of it, we'll go back, just go back a step for a second where I had x minus 5 equals 2y. If you think of it like this, I have to divide this by 2. And if you divide one thing by 2, you have to divide everything by 2. Then that's going to leave me x over 2, or 1 half x minus 5 halves equals y. Both of these are correct answers, but I'm pretty sure my Labs Plus prefers this this one. 
And then the last thing is we're going to replace, if it is a one-to-one -one function, meaning both the original and the inverse are functions, then we're going to replace y with my, my inverse function notation, this f to the negative 1. They are because this is a line, and line, lines are increasing over the entire um, graph, so it is a one-to-one -one function. So I'm going to write it as f to the negative 1 of x. That's what lets me know this is the inverse, not the original. It equals 1 half x minus 5 halves. All right, so let's try another one. Looking at b, now, before I even start, is this going to be a one-to-one -one function? No. And the reason it's not is because it's a parabola. And we already talked about the fact that the parabola fails the vertical line test. So it won't be a one-to-one -one function, which means at the very end, I will not put back the, the f to the negative 1 notation. But all the rest of it should be the same. So we're going to interchange x and y, just the letters. So this is going to be x equals y squared plus 2. Now I've got to solve for the new y. So I have to get rid of everything that's with y. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Plus 2 minus 2 cancels, which is what we wanted, so that y is by itself. That gives me x minus 2 equals y squared. Now I still need to get y by itself. Um, it's got that squared with it. I need to get rid of the squared. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. When I do that, remember you'll have a positive and negative square root of x minus 2 equals y. And that is all you can do on this one. You can't put back the notation because it is not a one-to-one -one function. So the inverse, the inverse exists, there is an inverse, it's just that that inverse isn't a function. All right, so one more on the next one. Remember, uh, we're just going to switch x and y. And so again, this one was written without an x. Um, that's okay, we can just go in and put an x there. So let's do that for, I mean, without an x. It was written without a y, it was written with f of x instead of y. So I'm going to first change that, so y equals x minus 2 cubed. Now, x and y are going to swap places, just the letters themselves, nothing else moves. So, x equals y minus 2 cubed. Now, we need to get that y by itself, so I need to get rid of everything that's with it. So, um, I need to get rid of that minus 2, but I can't until I get rid of the parentheses, because they're kind of holding it all together. And the parentheses are there because of the cubed. So in order to get rid of that, I have to take the cube root. All right, so when I take the cube root on the right-hand side, that cancels the cube. The cube root cancels the cube. And the cube is the reason the parentheses are there. So the parentheses are gone also. So I'm going to have cube root of x equals y minus 2. And i still got to get y by itself. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides, so plus 2. Now right here, there's nothing wrong with you putting the plus 2 after the square root. However, you don't want it to accidentally get under the radical. It's not a square root, by the way. It's a cube root. But you don't want the, the 2 to get under the radical because it doesn't belong there. So I'm actually going to put it in front, 2 plus the cube root of x. It means the same thing, so it doesn't really matter, equals y. So now, in this case, cube roots have posit don't have positive and negative answers. They only have one answer. So I'm going to assume that this is a one-to-one -one function. Some cubics are and some aren't. This one, because it doesn't have a vertical stretch or compression on it, should be a one-to-one -one function, which means I'm going to rewrite this with my inverse function notation. f to the negative 1 of x equals 2 plus cube root x. There's nothing wrong if you write it as cube root of x plus 2. Just make sure that you're clear that that plus 2 is not under the, um, the radical. All right.